Hello and welcome. The digital enterprise is the new buzzword. Actually, it's not very new, but the component is what makes it interesting. Think about social, mobile, analytical and cloud. Now, companies are changing because customers are changing. And in order to ensure that those companies keep pace with their customers, the people who work with them closely, that's the BPM industry, also has to change and configure itself or perhaps transfigure itself. I'm joined by Keshav Murugesh, CEO of WNS, who's going to tell us what he's been doing in this space. So, Keshav, uh, nice to talk to you. I know that you've had some good results. Uh, does that also reflect what uh, your customers are saying in terms of the way they're uh, trying to realign their businesses with the new digital native, so to speak? Sure. So I think uh, from our point of view and uh, the performance that we've seen as a company go in is essentially good execution on some of those points really. Mm -hmm. And some of these areas are things that I spoke about, you know, three years ago, we've executed well. And uh, what we're seeing is our ability to transform our clients' business, mm -hmm. not just by leveraging domain knowledge and, you know, and, and skills in that area, but more importantly, in terms of moving them from input models to much more outcome-based models, leveraging technology, leveraging you know, analytics, leveraging uh, some of these mm. models that give them this risk reward and you know, wonderful solutions, and also build a lot of trust with them uh, has impacted us extremely positively. So illustrate uh, outcome-based model. So very simply, if you look at, you, may, you, sp you, s you spoke about uh, social media and, you know, that's mm -hmm. the hot buzzword. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's business as usual. It's okay. something that, you know, <laughs> our clients are used to in mm -hmm. terms of interacting, uh, having interactions with their end, end customers. So what we did as a company is we built a, a, a very interesting social media kind of an engine. Mm -hmm. Okay. We call it uh, the, the WNS analytics decision engine. So what it does is really looks at end client's behavior, mm. right? And then based on certain algorithms we have created, you know, behind it, mm. it actually provides certain decision-making kind of thinking or tools to our end clients, mm. as a result of which they're able to convert mm -hmm. a, you know, a, a presence on the net or whatever into mm. actual revenue. Mm -hmm. so, so this could be for uh, like a supermarket or a It could be for store. clients in retail, it could be clients in tra travel, it could be for the insurance sector, it, should be, it could be for the mm -hmm. banking and financial services. So it's, it's being taken all across. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we also introduced a new, another tool called Pro Genie, mm -hmm. right, which now tracks social media kind of uh, presence mm. and it also is it, it is able to based on various studies and, and, and a lot of uh, background work that has already been done by the engine identify mm. when somebody is going to get off the net just before a decision is made and then it pops uh, you know, uh, some kind of a, mm -hmm. a question or, or, or an intervention right. you know with the client as a result of which our end customers business you know goes up because so a sale is, a, is being made is this a product that you sell to customers or is this a service that you give to customers? so it's a service that we give mm -hmm. leveraging certain platforms which for which we own the ip okay so that makes you more of a product company right at least for this component no not necessarily because okay. for us mm -hmm. we deliver services mm -hmm. but as you, as you you are aware we have to keep embedding some of these intelligent thinking inside you know, the, the services. Mm -hmm. So the, the client never understands that they're actually buying or engaging with a product. All they see is the end outcome. Right. And as a result of which, we then go with the risk reward model or the outcome based model of pricing. So that we tell them that look, based on the outcome we have delivered for you, we want X percentage you know, of the revenue. They're very happy. To and that, that outcome is customer acquisition? It could be revenue, not mm. just customer ac acquisition. It mm. could be revenue. Mm. It could be a better record on DSOs or, co or collections. It could be a completely new revenue model for an airline industry where they never expected to earn certain revenue because they couldn't reconcile tickets. But mm. because of our uh, very fair engine, for example, we're actually telling them, you know, you've goofed up in terms of billing all of these agents and here is a new revenue stream, but we want 20%. Okay. Tell us, what, is, what are your most demanding customers asking of you this year? So from so I think we're in we're in a very lucky uh, place, uh, Govind. I think what they want from us is more of what we are already delivering to them, right? They they're really looking f to be led now. They're seeing a big recovery in terms of the business climate, and and therefore they're looking at more you know domain kind of thinking, more leadership kind of qualities, such that they can demolish their competition, leveraging the WNS model, and they're looking to more technology enabled solutions in the business process side as a result of which they are not focused on what's happening inside WNS 
but more focused on what WNS is delivering for them mm -hmm. in order to you know meet their strategic goals. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a question, I mean, I keep asking you every time I see you. So, let's look at the supply side in terms of talent and so on. You've been doing some work there, you want to set up a university, I hear. Uh, how is that whole area or that part of the world shaping up? Very interesting. You know, at an IT, mm. you know, level at NASCOM, we talked about $300 billion in exports. Mm. You know, with uh, uh, by 2020, uh, by, with uh, BPM, we are talking about 50, taking the industry from 21 billion to 50 billion by 2020. So it actually means there is a need for a large number of people to come into this industry, understand this industry, and get very mm. engaged with, with the industry. So now it's it's a business imperative. Mm. And where the talent will come from is, is the discussion. It can't be just the tier one mm. kind of location because as we looked at, you know, some studies that we did with, you know, employees and prospects from tier ones, you know, these locations, employees are starting to get used to work-life balance, mm. right? Plus, the cost base is, is changing. So, we are, we are all the time looking at the tier two, tier three, you know, kind of locations. And in this scheme of things, what we're doing is to rebrand the entire industry for people to understand that this is an attractive industry, it's a high growth industry, it is delivering, you know, exciting, you know, jobs, it allows people to travel the world and it creates uh, stretch, career. you know, yeah. career paths and yeah. stretch roles for, for them. So, the whole rebranding, particularly around influencers, the school and college teachers and parents to help them understand that we are no more an industry that just focuses on wage arbitrage. We employ many more chartered accountants, cost accountants, PhDs, statisticians, uh, doctors than we ever did before. So, you know, that's uh, the big need of the hour if you ask me. And separately, at a very structural level, you know, uh, understanding that we have to now hire for skills mm -hmm. and not for degrees in the future and therefore creating job families, uh, creating training programs, creating curriculum course development with the universities with the help of the right. National Skills Development Council, uh, which is something that we're doing. And as a result of all of this, you will see that by June or July, we'll actually have a syllabus for the first time for a you know, business process management degree so that we get more industry-ready graduates into the business. Okay. So let me come back to the business itself now. What's the one game-changing thing that you think uh, will happen this year or in the next 12 to 14 months? Uh, which will force you to maybe serve your clients differently or respond to some of their challenges differently? Look, our business is one... Let me add the supplemental question. And what yeah. could be the challenge in doing that? Right. So our business is a very stable business, right? Our contracts are long-term, six to eight-year mm -hmm. kind of contracts. We, you know, it needs complete commitment on the other side from CEO and from uh, sometimes board members. So very stable, very steady business. Having said that, mm. the decision timing is, is very long. So there is nothing that is dramatically going to change overnight to change your, your mm. business profile, so to speak. Also, as I have said to you before, we layer business. So th there is no kind of discretionary budget that is available to BPM as it is available to IT, mm. right? It is, you know, you get in and you, you keep growing the business. So if you're at 8% growth... You're part of the company. And yeah, you're you, part if of you're at 8%, you will grow to 10%. So you, you will have to keep penetrating and radiating your business model across your, your client base. The most interesting aspect, you know, for all of us is the fact that clients now appreciate and understand that the, the, the data that they own, they have not done much with. And people like us, are far savvier and have built far better engines and far far better uh, you know skills to manage that data for them and i think that has the potential to dramatically change the profile of how bpm is positioned in the marketplace you know change our revenue and profitability profiles and more importantly change the impact of this industry in right. the client mind so you're saying that all this data that's been sitting in your service uh, servers all this while is something that you can now really mine and create value for your clients right. so to do the, something the data with. sitting in their servers yeah. you know which okay. earlier they said was theirs mm. uh, as somebody said yesterday data is the new oil mm. they now understand that we have invested in all of these you know the skills the technology mm. the processes to mine that and give them new you know, business insights. Mm. And that, if you ask me, is going to be the biggest area of growth. So at WNS itself, it is growing at double the rate of the company average. Mm. And I only expect that as we do more... And you more would call this area, big data analytics or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. It could be big data. It could be you know, specific uh, to you know, certain kind of offerings or certain kind of services. But it's the new excitement that people are saying, take my data and teach me what I should do with it. Okay, so last question, what's the flip side? So for instance, you know, uh, Airbnb can put 
the hotel industry out of business. Extreme statement, but it surely will eat up into uh, the hotel industry as we know it. What's the what's the one thing that worries you similarly? You know, frankly, uh, for what your I, clients, not maybe no, not for no, you. Yeah, I, exactly. From from a from a client's point of view, I'm very clear. As we have moved up the value chain, and as we have taken out core processes from the client, the way we deliver those processes are far more efficient and deliver in completely different models than what they're used to. In most cases, their ability to switch off is now zero, mm -hmm. right? Because we are now an extension of their enterprise. There's no question yeah. of switching on or off. Correct. We are yeah. now part of them, right? So there is no such danger out there. And as long as you deliver high quality service and business insights, you can only keep growing this business. So to your example of Airbnb, you know, I think as long as the hotel industry on the other side kept delivering outstanding services, Airbnb is nothing but an aggregator or a platform, yeah. right? Mm. On the other, uh, once a person comes in, so and it's Instagram and it put Kodak out of business, not directly, but I mean, yeah, yeah. but Kodak has its own, you yeah, know, yeah, sure, own no, story. I mean, yeah, not to stretch so, the analogy too yeah. far. But so yeah. the, the the wonderful thing about our business, uh, Govind, is the fact that we still believe it is heavily underpenetrated mm. and still very nascent. Even today, some of the new contracts that even WNS won in 2013, mm. you'll be surprised some of the large contracts came from large American companies outsourcing in this model for the first time ever. Okay. You know, that's the most exciting thing for India and for this model long term. And that's a heartening thing to close. Thank you so much yes, for speaking with us. Yes, absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.